I couldn't just pick one. I hope you guys really did not expect that. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. Or if you're new, thanks for clicking on my video. So this is part two of my favorites. These are my high-end favorites for 2021. This video is a bit longer and honestly, it was because I really had trouble figuring out what I wanted to do, what I wanted to use because I love all these products and it was hard to just pick one, but I came up with this look and I use my favorites to do it. So before we get into the video, if you're new, I would love to have you join the family. So please hit that subscribe button and turn on your notification bell so you know every time I upload, I do lots of makeup, mostly makeup. I do wigs, I also do a little bit of fitness. So if you're into kind of a one-stop shop for all things beauty, you're in the right place. If you wanna see what products I use to get this look using my favorites from 2021, all high-end, then stay tuned and keep on watching. All right, so I already filmed my drugstore favorites for 2021. If you haven't watched that video, go check it out. It'll be linked in the description box below. But I'm ready to dive into my high-end favorites for 2021. These are products that I absolutely love. I don't know why for some reason I tend to pull these out more on special occasions as opposed to just wearing them, but that's just a habit that I have. So I'm going to start off with primer. I'm going to tell you guys all of them. I can't use everything that I'm showing, but I'm going to try to use as much as possible. So for primers, I pulled out, I believe I have four. And one I don't have in here I'm gonna mention, it's actually a moisturizer, but it's a blurring moisturizer and I use it for primer on my no makeup makeup days and that's the Clinique Hydro Blur Moisturizer. Love using that by itself or as a primer, so that's an honorable mention. But for primers, for makeup, Pat McGrath. I've heard a lot of people say they don't love this, but this just does something to my skin. I don't know what it is, but I always feel like it comes out really smooth and my makeup application looks flawless. I also love the Urban Decay Optical Illusion Complexion Primer. A lot of the stuff that I've been using now is for blurring and wrinkles, so you're gonna see a theme. Another I have is the Hydra Blur Primer. I am almost done with this one. I think this was in last year's favorites too. Um, this is also a blurring primer. This is from Dermalogica. And then the fourth one is kind of a hybrid highlighter slash primer. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. And I have mine in the shade six and a half deep. So I really want to use Pat McGrath, but I feel like I use that. I know I use that in my Pat McGrath video. So we're going to go with the Urban Decay today. I feel like the Pat McGrath is almost kind of like a hybrid, like a skincare and blurring. But this one just feels a little more slippery, kind of like the professional, I guess. Okay, let's put it in your hair, Barbara. So that is the primer there. I definitely feel like it smooths everything out. My face feels smooth. This feels really, really good. I'm gonna add a little bit of the Charlotte Tilbury just because I freaking love it. So, and also I wanna show you guys what it looks like. This is a little deep for my skin if I were to try to just wear it by itself, so I don't. And I like to apply this with my foundation brush because ultimately I'm just mixing it in. But as you can see, it gives a nice little sheen underneath your makeup. Same as if you were to put any other like high, um, illuminating primer or anything like that. So I just feel like on days especially where I feel like I'm a little run down or feeling a little just lackluster, my skin isn't feeling like it looks great, I love applying this underneath my foundation. For foundation, we have a few options. You guys know foundation is one of my favorite things. And I thought I was going to have trouble picking these out, but it ended up being pretty easy. I have five. <laughs> um, the first one, this is a, I, I bought this this year, but it's an older foundation. This is the Lancome Tint Idol Ultra Wear. I have fallen in love with this again. I had it before and I think my shade, my shade was too light. This is in the shade 510 Suede C. It's a little dark for me. 
but y'all know I finesse it. Love this. Another one I fell in with in love with this summer, or maybe beginning of the year when my face, beginning of last year when my face was still really dry. This is the Beauty Bakery Insta Bake Aqua Glass Foundation. I love this when my skin was dry. I felt like it just made my skin look so good. It looked like glass, it, good coverage, but you could sheer it out. I don't know what it was about this, but I put it on and I was just like, wow, I was not expecting this to be this good. So this I had to include. My Pat McGrath foundation has to be in here. When I did my full face of Pat McGrath, I remembered, I've only worn this probably total of like three or four times because I was trying to save it. And then every time I wear it, I'm like, oh my God, my face looks so good. Why don't I wear this more? I think part of it is the color's a little tiny bit off, but most of my foundations are, so that's irrelevant. But just this looks so good on the skin and it always makes me feel like I look so flawless. So this would probably be my number one, not even gonna lie. The next one I have was a newer purchase for me last year. This is the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk Foundation. I did a review and wear test on this. I love this one too and I was surprised because it says luminous silk but my skin is more normal slightly combo when it's warmer but love how this wears looks beautiful everything just kind of feels like it's it's not drying the luminous silk obviously but it also helps smooth everything out kind of like a filter effect and then the last one if you want something a little lighter coverage or a little less expensive the Fenty Ease Drop. I wore this in a test, a wear test as well. All of these videos are on my channel if you wanna check them out. Love the way this wore, love the coverage of it. For this to be like a skin tint, this is a foundation. But you can sheer it out and wear it as a skin tint if you want something with lighter coverage. So any of these you will be absolutely amazed by. I think I'm gonna go with the Lancome because I don't know if I've shown this on camera. I know that I've worn this a lot recently whenever I've done glam looks, but I don't think I filmed a video with it. So I'm gonna wear this one because it is, I don't think it's on my channel. If it is, my bad, but I love it. The only high-end color corrector that I have, and I'm gonna go ahead and put this under my eyes now, um, and I actually really like this one. This is why I just haven't really bought another one. This is the Sephora Future, Bright Future Corrector. This is in the shade orange. I like this one because it is orange, but it's also very thin. So it doesn't add too much color, but it still color corrects. I think I've just fallen in love with my drugstore one so much that I haven't bothered to try any other high-end versions of this. And because it's going under my makeup and I'm not really too worried about how it looks, I don't care to really spend a lot of money on it. So we're gonna go ahead and blend the foundation out and let my under eye sit. But as you can see, the color's not bad. It's just, it's a cool and I usually don't wear cools, but for some reason this one works for me. I've tried the warm tone and it is just not, it doesn't look good. So as you can see, I put two pumps of this and I feel like this coverage is really, really good for only two pumps. There are times when I will put three and four pumps of foundation if I wanna make sure I have really full coverage, but I feel like my skin's kind of been doing better. If you see the texture I have right now, I used a peel, um, an exfoliating peel, and it broke me out. So I kinda was waiting to film this video because I wanted my skin to be a little better, but it's kind of taken a while and I really wanted to get this video done. So that is what these little bumps and the texture is on my face. So I think I'm gonna stop there with those two pumps and then I don't know if I wanna do my concealer yet. I'm gonna blend out this color corrector and then I think we're gonna do eyeshadow first because I don't want to have fallout on my face and if i do i guess i could just use powder i'm gonna do brows that'll be easy right so for brows i have to I have a box of like my smaller stuff here for brows i have my mark jacobs this is their brow wow duo i hold this when did i haul this 
I think during the summer, something like that. Or was it even last year? Y'all, I can't keep up. I'm sorry. But I love this because it has a brow pencil and it also has a brow gel. So it is very great for travel. This pretty much stays in my travel bag and it wears well. I like the shade of this pencil and it's not too small. I don't love a small pencil for my brows. So I just think this is a great combo and it came with a refill. So love that. I also have the Urban Decay Brow Blade. You guys know I've been loving to do like that micro bladed look with my eyebrows. And this has a pencil and an ink stain. Love this because again, two in one. Everyday brows just trying to hurry up and get out of the door and I'm not worried about like, oh, let me tell y'all colors, sorry. The Marc Jacobs, does it have? Dark brown, dark drapes for the Urban Decay. And then four and a half, this is the Benefit Goof Proof. This is the one with the bigger tip here and it's the little triangle shape. I love this one when I'm just trying to hurry up, fill in and go. And I think that's it. And then of course my brow gel, have to include my Anastasia Beverly Hills. I always use that one if I have it as my high end version. So brows, I wanna do pretty quick and easy. I don't wanna to spend too much time on them. I'll just do one on camera like I did my other video to show you guys. And I recently showed the brow blade, I believe. But I do want to use the ink stain, so we're gonna do that. And then I think I'm gonna go with my, I don't know, probably the Marc Jacobs. I just love how easy this is to fill in my brows. I don't love that this doesn't have a spoolie, so I feel like I have to go in with something else that has one, but I'm gonna use my, let's use the Marc Jacobs. I'm gonna go ahead and use the pencil just to fill in the tail. But I love the color of this one too. And it's just super easy. Like this is pretty much it. This is what I do with my brows. And then after I do the rest of my makeup, if I need to go back over them and like fill something in or whatever, then I do that. But this is easy, simple, done. Love these products. All right, so I'll touch up my brows if I need to later, but we're gonna stop there. And I can't decide if I wanna do my eyes first or if I wanna do the rest of my face. I think, let's do eyes. Y'all know how I am about eyeshadow. This was the hardest part for me because I did not wanna have to pick. For my eyeshadow primer, that was pretty easy. I actually really only had one. I have an honorable mention, I guess, but for this year, I've absolutely been loving the NARS Tinted Smudge Proof Eyeshadow Base. I love using a eyeshadow base that has a tint because as you can see, my eyelash, my eye lids are a little darker. So I like something that's gonna lighten them and just kind of even it out a little bit. The other that I love high in would be my uh, Paint Pots by MAC. I can't, Lay In Low is the one that I use. So. Those are the two that I love the most. I've tried to get into the Anastasia Beverly Hills one and it is just way too white. Like I feel like I have to be really, really careful. So whenever I just want something that's like, I know I'm gonna be able to work with this, not gonna have any issues, this is what I grab. To set that and I guess also show you one of my favorite face powders, like setting powders, I have a few. Matter of fact, I guess we can go ahead and talk about that. I have four. The first one is the Urban Decay All Nighter. I think they still make this, I hope they do. I have backups of this. I absolutely love it. This also stays in my travel bag. Is this the one I'm almost done with? Yeah, I have hit pan on this, working on finishing this one. Y'all know I love my Nakia Joy Cosmetics Finishing Powder. I have a backup and I just recently purchased the press version of this. I haven't tried it yet, but if it's like this, I know I'm gonna love it. This is very smoothing. Love the smell of it, it's a vanilla smell. I also love the Sephora Translucent Setting Powder, very similar to the Nakia Joy Cosmetics without the strong smell. Does it have any smell at all? Whoa. 
not really it doesn't so if you don't like the smell of the nakia joy cosmetics maybe you'll like that more and then last but not least i have my lys this is called the triple fix translucent setting powder this is a fairly newer addition to my collection but you guys know when you try something if you have enough makeup you know when you love something you love it so i'm gonna set my eyes with the urban decay one try to use different ones for different things. I'm showing these now because I need to go wet them. Two sponges that I decided to pick cayenne ones since I had my drugstore ones too. The Colored Rain sponges, absolutely love the Beauty Bakery sponges. Love them both and they work about the same. I think the, the Beauty Bakery one is a little firmer than this one. This is like my favorite favorite. This is like, I love this too, but this is my favorite. So these are pretty inexpensive. If you want to give them a try, definitely worth it. I don't buy beauty blenders. I just don't. I don't see what the hype is. I did when they first came out, but now I found others that I love better. I knew that eyeshadow was going to be one of the hardest things for me to pick because it is my favorite and it literally gives me anxiety just to even think about having to choose one, but I was able to narrow it down. I'm pretty proud of myself. So... This is not a palette, but I had to include my multi-chrome singles. I have them in this Morphe Magnetic palette, and these are from different brands. I have Sydney Grace in here. Y'all don't make me lie. Oh, I can't believe. I know for sure Terra Moon Cosmetics is in here, and I feel like there's one more brand. No, because I think I bought those as loose. I think these are all Sydney Grace and Terra Moon. Yeah, they are. So only three of them are Sydney Grace, which is this one, this one, and this one. Yep. I can tell by the texture of them. So these three are Sydney Grace, and then all the rest of these are Terra Moon. This is just a random MAC shadow that I have in here. But these are so gorgeous. They're all multi-chrome and I had to include these because these are my favorites. As far as eyeshadow palettes go, my Anastasia ABH Norvina. This is the volume five palette. I did a video with this. Y'all know I love purples. So, I mean, are you really surprised? I did three looks with this one, I believe. And I even used the freaking glitter. I was so proud of myself but absolutely love this palette. I also had to include Natasha Denona because you guys know I am a Natasha Denona fan. I decided to include the Glam palette in my favorites. This came out and I don't think I got it at first and then I was like, okay, I decided I wanted it and I do not regret this at all. This palette is so gorgeous, neutral, cool tones. I did three looks with this one as well, I think, if not more. One of my favorite palettes of the year. This is a newer addition to my collection just this past year. But I need to tell you guys, like a lot of times by the time a video is posted, I probably filmed it a month or two ago, if not longer. So if you're just seeing a video including this, that doesn't mean I just filmed it. So this is the Sigma Untamed palette. I knew I had to have this one because of the greens but also because of these purples. Like I just thought this palette was so gorgeous. Neutrals, this was my first time purchasing from Sigma when they had their friends and family sale, I believe. And this was like the perfect starter palette for me to get. I got this one and the Enchanted one, but this was definitely my favorite. I know this one's new. This is September, I don't care. I knew I loved it. This Natasha Denona Glam Face Palette. You guys saw this in a video. This freaking palette is so gorgeous. I love every single shade, all of the shadows, all of the face stuff. I'm not going to use this one because I just recently used this in a video. But you guys saw from my video, my look came out beautiful. And these shadows are gorgeous. The blush is amazing. So is the highlighter. This palette is perfect. I couldn't just pick one. I hope you guys really did not expect that. Another favorite, relatively new, and I'm pretty sure I used this in a video. This is the Huda Beauty Wild Jaguar palette, y'all. 
I knew I wanted this as soon as I saw it, but I waited and I got it on sale. This purple in the middle, there's purples here, there's a green, this kind of taupey silver, like dark shade. Like everything about this is perfect. This looks like sexy, sleek, like this looks like a Jaguar to me. That makes perfect sense. And I love this palette. Three more. I had to include this palette. And I think, was this last summer? I think this came out last summer. This is the Melt She's in Parties palette. I'm not going to use this one today because I do have a video dedicated just to this one. But y'all know I love purples. And I think this was the first Melt palette that I bought. I have a stack. I have a couple stacks. But this was the first palette that I bought. And I freaking love this. Every single shade in here. Love. I actually feel like they almost need a lighter shade, but these run so deep and it's just beautiful. Formula, amazing, love it. And then last but not least, because I could not pick just one, I could not pick just one of my Pat McGrath palettes. I picked two. I picked one because it's more of like a neutral, kind of, and then the other just because I freaking love it. And I had trouble. I picked the Utopian Dream palette. I picked this one and I was going back and forth between I wanted to pick this one or the Divine Rose 2, but I think I like this one more. I do. I do. I love this palette. I love it because there is a duochrome in it, which y'all know is like my jam. I'm trying to see if you can see it. That one right there, right there beautiful but just the shades in here i love pat mcgrath's formula you know one of her palettes at least one had to be included in my formula this you can use as a blush this shade actually gets pretty deep but her special shades this shade right here just all of it i love pat mcgrath so there was no way i couldn't include it but i think i am an outlier with this last one because I feel like not everybody loves this palette and I don't understand why because I think it's gorgeous. I could have went with the Mothership 5 Bronze Seduction because like, okay, it's a neutral, but I don't think I would be being true to my heart if I did. I went with Midnight Sun. This is my favorite. That one's also my favorite, but it's more for the special shades, but just like out of all of my Pat McGrath ones. And this one is one that I got later. I got the Mothership 5 first. But this one, I think I'm going to use this. I don't know if I've used this on my channel. This palette to me is like everyday neutrals right here. But then because it has a green, it has a purple blue, it has special shades. That is what made me pick this palette. Because of green and purple. Y'all know those are my two favorites to wear if I wanna do color and everything else just goes together. So that's why this is one of my favorites. Looking at this right now, I just realized, are these kind of similar? Cause I'm trying to decide if I wanna use the Untamed. I don't know if I've used it or not. I know I've used it, but I don't know if I've used it on camera. My brush is probably gonna fall out. We'll just let it fall out. Other than the blue, like there's a green, there's neutrals. These are very similar. I guess that's why it had to be included. Have I used the Sigma one? I think that was the hardest decision I've ever had to make. Oh my God. Okay, so we're gonna go with the Sigma palette. We're gonna go with that because I don't think I've used it on camera. I don't know if I used the Pat McGrath one either, honestly, but we're just gonna go with it. And because the colors are so similar, I guess I kind of feel like I wanna show the Sigma one because if you don't want to pay $125 for Pat McGrath, maybe you might want to pick this one up. The formulas do not compare. I'm not saying that. I'm talking strictly the color story. So, all right. The shade names are on the back of here. I think I'm going to do a matte look. I'll swatch the shimmers for you guys, but I think I'm going to do a matte look. I'm going to start off with, that's one thing I remember, these shades. There's like... I need a kind of in-between transition shade, like a bronzer. I'm going to grab my, one of my bronzers that I have in here. This will also be in 
I'll tell you guys favorites. Of course, I had to include my Alamar Cosmetics Hydrating Complexion Trio. I told you guys that this was a favorite of mine when I bought it. And then I told you again because I bought a backup in the BoxyCharm add-on, I believe, when I found it, it was like $5. So I was like, I already know I love this. So I'm just gonna go ahead and grab another one. But I love using a bronzer in my crease as a transition shade. So I feel like the shades in this palette are a little tiny bit too deep. They're either a little too deep or a little too light. So if that ever happens, use your bronzer and it will be good. I'm gonna show you the shade Feral, which is not blind y'all. This shade here, I feel like this one's a little too dark and you'll see the difference. So this is my bronzer shade. And then when I come in with Feral, like that's a little too dark to be a transition shade. So that's why I went in with the other one. But these shades are very pigmented and just, like I said, I was new to their formula and I've heard people talk about them. They had a neutrals, I think it was nine pan palette that I started to get, but then I saw this palette and I was just like, no, we're gonna dive in. If we're gonna try, we are really gonna try. So happy with this selection. I do wish in this palette, and that's why I love the pat one, there was a darker brown versus these two kind of similar shades because now I'm like, well, what do I wanna do with my crease color? I'm gonna go in with that green. It's called Camouflage, but I'm hoping it comes off more like a dark, Ooh, well, it is green, but it is darker. So I was hoping it would come off as kind of like a cool tone, kind of greenish, grayish, which is exactly what it is doing. But I mean, I'm barely dipping in this palette and the colors just coming off definitely have to be careful if you don't like your shadows to be like too pigmented off the initial application. You might want to tap your brush off or something. I don't do that, but some people do. So just depends on your preference. I want to be punched in the face immediately. I never do all matte looks and the shimmers in this palette are calling me this kind of bronzy shade right here. I don't think that's too gold. We're gonna go in with Instinct. Yeah, that's not light enough. And it almost looks purple. It's packing a punch though. That's actually really pretty. It kind of reminds me of the matte that I used in my She's and Parties palettes. I'm gonna go back in. Let's take Rebel, which is the kind of more reddish brown. I'm gonna use the same brush and just put that. I don't know what I'm doing, y'all. I've used this palette, but I honestly went in more with the green and the darker shades, so. I'm just playing right now. And I said I was gonna do a neutral look and we just went from neutral to colorful in the blink of an eye because that is what Barbara does whenever she starts playing in eyeshadow. I'm gonna go back, let's see what this black looks like. Yeah, that is dark. I am barely dipping in this. I know this is coming out looking a little scattered, but I promise it's all gonna work out. So we're gonna go back in with Feral around the edge. We're just doing warm tones and cool tones and I love the palette and I love the formulation. The color story is the only thing. Like I feel like we're gonna go into, I feel like I just need a darker brown. Let's go back in this palette and I'm gonna use this other darker brown shade just around the edges. So in the Pat McGrath palette, since we're comparing, I'm gonna show you the shades that like, 
This would have been a good transition shade here. This one kind of matches feral, so it's about the same. But then this little kind of grayish charcoal just lightly dipping in there and diffuse that out a little bit. It's not a black. It's not a brown. It's not a gray. It's a kind of gray, but not all the way gray. I don't know how to explain it, but I just feel like it was kind of in between the shades that we had in the other palettes. So, and then I'm going to just go in and clean up the shade Instinct on the lid with a smaller brush because I want that to look like it's a little more carved out. This color does not play. You know how sometimes when you get a matte shade and it's really light, like it's not pigmented, this is pigmented. Like for it to be able to cut my crease like that, enough said. Four concealers. Gotta get these out of my box. I have a few, of course. I picked four and I don't think that's too bad. The first one is this Becca Ultimate Coverage Longwear Concealer. This one is in the shade Cinnamon. I love this for my face. I don't, I will use it under my eyes sometimes, but it's almost like my skin color. So it's a little too dark to use for that. But I love this for my face if I'm just trying to spot correct. And it is very thick, very long wearing, and you do have to set it because it is like, it's a very creamy consistency, so it will crease. My Pat McGrath, I don't think I will ever do a favorites unless I'm just doing like what came out that year. I will never do a favorites and this not be in there. I love this concealer. Always makes this area look super smooth, super bright, and never have any issues with it creasing. I set everything, so that goes without saying. Of course, Tarte Shape Tape, always gonna be in a favorites unless we're talking about only currants. This is just, I want full glam. I want a bright under eye. This is it. This last one is a newer favorite from this year. This is the Kosas. Why did I make this so small at the bottom? Oh Lord, I don't know what the name of this is. Why did I don't leave the name on here? Whatever, I'll put it on the screen. This is another one that I use more for like everyday not doing a glam look, just want to cover my under eyes so that they don't look so dark and I don't look so tired, but absolutely love this one. I'm going to show you guys this one because I don't think I've used it on camera, but as you can see, like for how I brighten, that is not bright enough, but I will just go ahead and use a little bit of it anyway for you guys to see how it blends out. And then I'll go over it with something lighter. I always let my concealer sit a little bit just to have fuller coverage. And then y'all know I go over it with a brush, but just look at how creamy and brightening. And even with it being, this is in the shade 08, the Tarte Shape Tape is in Tan Sand. My Pat McGrath is M17. I'm really bad at not saying that in favorite videos for some reason. I mean, this isn't bad. This is probably like what normal people do <laughs> when they want to brighten their under eye. I just personally like mine to be super bright. And then I feel like once I blend it out, it still doesn't look crazy. So this one isn't bad. I could use this by itself because it is brightening. So I'm gonna go ahead because the shape tape is the lightest and because it is a little bit more matte and put this one since the Kosas one is more hydrating. I think they will be a good mix. I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys this Alamar Cosmetics setting powder here. I was talking about in my video that I did not expect this to be as brightening as it is. And it comes off looking really orange, kind of peach, but I think it's perfect to use to blend into my foundation and places where you don't want too light, but you still want some brightness. But to set underneath my eyes, I'm gonna smooth that out real quick with my brush, and then I'm gonna use my Nakia Joy because 
That is my ultimate favorite powder. I think another reason I love this powder so much is because I feel like I can bake with it and it doesn't make me look cakey. It doesn't make me look too dry under the eyes. Like, I don't know what she did with this formula, but it is just really, really good. I also, I included it in last year's favorites. It is still a favorite this year as well. I just, I don't know why I didn't pull it out, but my Pat McGrath under eye setting powder, never going anywhere, ever. Like every other sale, I pick one up. I know it looks crazy, but we gonna be all right. Four face powders. Did I not pull a face powder? Barbara. These were pretty easy for me because I don't really use a lot of face powder. The first one is this Kosas Cloud Set Powder in Softly. This, I love, it is a little lighter, which helps whenever my foundation is really dark, like right now. It doesn't add too much coverage. It's more just to smooth everything out and set it. And then the other one, I have two shades actually, is the Sephora Micro Smooth Powder. I love this powder. It reminds me a lot of the MAC Mineralized Skin Finish. I have shade tan, which is number 35. And then this deep is number 60. This tan shade I actually use to set under my eyes as well when I'm doing a lighter coverage day. And then this one's a tad bit dark. So I use this almost as like a bronzer or if my foundation is a little light, which as of lately doesn't happen much. So I'm gonna take the Kosas powder and I'm gonna take my powder brush and just set the other areas of my face. I feel like I'm looking a little shiny, which the foundation that I used is not a luminous foundation, but it's definitely not drying. So I wanna just make sure the rest of my face is set and I'm gonna brush away my bake. But just everything looks so smooth and flawless. I feel like I can see a tiny, tiny little bit of shine peeking through where I put the Charlotte Tilbury, like just come through face. To contour, we have so many options. I love bronzing, I love contouring, so it was kind of hard to narrow this down. Some are a little newer than others, but y'all know how that goes. First, this Alamar, this is like an all-in-one. Contour, bronzer, highlight shade. Love this. And this I was talking about in one of my recent videos. Reminds me a lot of the formulation in this Beauty Bakery coffee and cocoa palette that I couldn't remember the name of. This sat on my vanity for the longest. This shade looks so good. Matter of fact, this has a little bit of a sheen to it. And I like to just put this right here in the front. Have to be careful if you have a lot of texture right there, it can emphasize it. But I just love that little bit of sheen that it gives. Just a tiny, tiny little bit. You don't need much. But this is a really deep shade. Looks good as a contour bronzer. The highlighter is beautiful. Love this freaking blush. Also a sheen to it as well. I had to include my Natasha Denona Sculpting Powder. I love this to contour. This is the perfect contour shade. It looks a little bit scary, but it's very buildable. And then this is also a fairly newer one. But I love this little palette. This is the Jouer Champagne and Macaroons palette. This is definitely more of a bronzer than a contour, but all the rest of these shades are absolutely gorgeous. So my opinion, you cannot go wrong with any of these. I'm gonna use the Natasha. Like it's deep, but I feel like it blends out so well. How about I tell you the shade? Why am I so bad at this? This is number five, and I think there's one even darker. This is a true contour. It is not a bronzer. Bronzer, I'm gonna go ahead, which one do I wanna show y'all? Let's go ahead and use the cocoa, coffee and, sorry. Yeah, coffee and cocoa. I'm gonna go in with my bronzer brush and I'm gonna go in very lightly. This says you're grounded, that's the shade name. I 
Everything just looks so good, so smooth. Nothing's patchy. Like everything is working well together. Freaking love it. I could use any of the blushes in here and be happy with all of them, but because I have more options, we're gonna go back in the bag. I have four, five blushes. So the first one I have, again, y'all know I had to include Pat McGrath. I loved her divine blushes when they came out. My favorite, which one is this? Paradise Venus. This I think was, ouch, pinch myself. A lot of people's favorites. It's like a terracotta kind of bronzy, warm, rusty, like a perfect everyday shade for any warm tone look. This was definitely my favorite. She ended up including this one in one of her trios as well. And I started to pick up the trio because it had a different highlighter in it. And then I was like, you're just being stupid. So I didn't, but this is my favorite blush out of all of the ones that she came out with. Another powder blush option is the Charlotte Tilbury Cheek to Chic. This is Walk of No Shame. I love this one because it's kind of hard, but I dip my brush mainly in the blush part first and I have to build it up. This is a little lighter than what I thought it was gonna be, but it's perfect for like a everyday flush of color. And then this highlighter in the middle isn't super blinding, but mixed together, they just make you look glowy and fresh and just, it's beautiful so these two were my top favorites for powders and then if you love cream blushes my two favorite high-end were the melt cosmetics this one this one I got on their website they had some that came out at Sephora and I bought sandy cheeks and it's too light for like my glam looks it's more for like a neutral look but I found this shade daydreamer and it is freaking perfect. I am gonna use this one, I think. Either this one or, or this Tower 28. This is the Beach Please Power Hour cream blush, if I can get it open. Kind of similar, but this one's darker. I know I haven't used this one. I don't think I've used either one of them on camera. Let's see, I'm gonna use the, mm, I'm gonna use the Melt one. This one has a little bit of a sheen to it. It almost looks like there's a little bit of glitter, not glitter, but shimmer a little bit in the pan. I have a lot on my brush. I already know I do. I'm gonna try to put this on lightly, but this shade is just so perfect and it's pigmented, but they blend out well. So we're gonna place that with this brush. And then I like to go over these. I like to like blend this in with my bronzer. And then I go over it with my sponge just to press it into the skin. But you can see that gave me a little bit of sheen on my cheeks. And it's a nice cool tone. It looks warm, but it's a little bit cool. So I think it could go either way. We're gonna go over it with, let's go over it with the Charlotte. And then we're just gonna go over that a little bit to set it. And I am concentrating more on the outside in the blush, as opposed to getting into the highlighter since we are already really glowy. And I think this combo looks really good with this eye look. So we are on the right track because of course I'm gonna use a different highlighter. Another blush that I absolutely love. And this you get both, you get a powder and a cream. The Patrick Ta, Double Take Cream and Powder Blush in Oh She's Different. I've talked about this so many times. I didn't wanna use it again because I have used it. I've included it in favorites. It had to be in this video. I love both shades of these. I had to move that. It was blinding y'all, but I love both shades of these. They are perfect together. In his formula, he says use the powder first and then the cream on top if you want a more dewy wet look, but you can use it either way and the cream does not pick up your powder. So. If you're interested in this, it's a great combo if you wanna try out a cream, but also want a powder. For highlighter, again, we could use, I actually love this, is Skinny Dip by Jouer. Love this highlighter. Used it in a video, I think. This is what it looks like. Super pretty. This is a very light swatch, but absolutely love the shade of this one. 
The highlight in this coffee and cocoa palette is a little bit darker. And I don't usually do highlighters this dark. Like that's almost like a blush topper for me, but it's a gorgeous formula. So if you have a darker skin tone, you're gonna love that one. The other two I have in my bag. This of course, I feel like I mentioned this one. I'm just gonna give it an honorable mention because I think I mentioned it last year. The Pat McGrath Champagne Gold, like the heavy mama. I don't even know if you can still get this one, but this is the one with the twist off. Super gorgeous champagne gold shade. We are not wearing this one today. I wanna show you guys something new. But then I also want to show you this one. I don't think I wore this one. Oh, I did. I don't think I wore it on camera. I have worn it. This is the LYX, their Aim High Pressed Highlighter in Brave. This is a champagne. I remember saying I thought this looked so glittery and then I put it on and I was like, this is absolutely blinding and gorgeous. Love the formula, love the price point. I think these are $18. So if you wanna try out this brand, it is a black owned brand, absolutely love it. I'm gonna use the Jouer because I don't think I use that on camera. And one thing I also have that I wanted to mention, and I guess I didn't mention it yet because I didn't know where to put it. This is the Danessa Myricks Color Fix Matte. This is in the shade Desert Rose. This is a liquid, very pigmented product that you can use on your eyes, you can use it on your cheeks, you can use it on your lips. I've used it on all three for like a monochromatic look, but I always feel like I think I'll end up taking out more than I need. I'm gonna just show you this color real quick. So it's just a little squeeze to, I'm gonna squeeze just the tiniest bit. Y'all watch how much this spreads. So you see, that's all I have on my hand. It just keeps going and going and going like that color and it stays like I probably shouldn't have spread this all over my hand like that now that I think about it but yeah like this is a beautiful lip color to put this on your cheeks I would advise put it on something dab in it with a brush or a sponge take the extra off and then put it on your face because very pigmented but we're gonna go in with the Jouer highlighter my cheeks are already super glowy, but you know I love highlighters, so like I think this is the perfect shade for a cool tone look or a warm tone look. Like I feel like my face just looks wet. It does not look like I have a lot of product on my face that is just sitting on top of my skin. Everything's just melting in so well together i'm freaking loving it so i think we can move on to lips now I'm trying to see what else i have in here that i have not talked about this is what i get for working out of two boxes grande lash this is in here this is a favorite y'all know this already <laughs> i never want to be without this i feel like i've seen a big difference in my lashes more so when i just use regular mascara as opposed to like just how my lashes look every day but this definitely works. And then I also should have used this instead of my brush, but I forgot. Y'all, this little power pocket puff thing, whatever it's called by Beauty Blender, setting your face right here, smoothing everything out. I don't know why this is so special, but it is amazing. You can use this side if you just wanna use it to set. I think this side was if you wanna apply powder. I don't remember all their details, but yes, absolutely love this. This is newer for me this year. So moving into lips, I have four lip liners. First, the Sephora brand, this is their Contour Gel, Rouge Gel Lip Liner. I have several shades of this. This is not the shade that I should have picked for today, but I just grabbed one to tell you about it. This is in the shade uh, Mesquite. I think I also have Molasses, which is one of my favorites. And then I have a darker one too. This one is more like a my lips but better, kind of wearing a nude, but want my lip gloss or whatever to last a little bit longer. This one's actually a little darker than I thought it was gonna be. Definitely love this formula, love that it is retractable. I don't like sharpening my pencils, so this is something I pick up every Sephora sale because they're used now, they're doing the Sephora brand 30% off. 
This is newer for me, and I think I found this in TJ Maxx or Marshalls or something like this, but this is the Uoma Beauty Lip Pencil in the shade Simone. This is a brown, and I love it because it's not too cool, but it's also not too dark. This is like the perfect, if you wanna do a nude lip and you wanna outline with a brown and then go in with like a peachy nude, the shade is gorgeous and I love the formula. Don't love that I have to sharpen it, but that's okay. Pat McGrath Permagel Lip Liners. This is in the shade Ground Control. This one needs to be sharpened. She is also very dark. So again, for more of a cool toned with a peachy nude, you could put a red with it too, or if you wanted to do like a burgundy. I have no idea what I'm doing with my lips yet. I'm trying to figure it out as I'm swatching these, but love the formula of this again don't love you have to sharpen it i'm kind of thinking i'm gonna go with my sephora one i need to pick my lip color first lip sticks we have one two three because i also have glosses but i'm trying to keep my thoughts together here so lipsticks this is new this is bougie this is expensive tom Ford. This is the lip, the lip color matte in the shade 100. I love this shade. It is kind of like a peachy pink little bit. I have a darker shade than this too, but this is a great neutral color I keep in my purse. I told you guys recently that I've fallen back in love with the Too Faced Melted Matte. I have two shades here. This is Gingerbread Girl. I think this one is Pumpkin Spice. I also have Bittersweet, which I just recently picked up. Melted Liquefied Lipstick by Too Faced as well. This is always gonna be one of my favorites. This is in the shade Chihuahua, which I think this one would actually go. So many options, but love this formula. It dries down matte and it stays, but it's very comfortable on the lips. And then last but not least, my Pat McGrath Labs. This is the Divine Rose Liquid Lipstick. Pretty sure this is gonna be too pink. Everything of hers is like super pink, but I think that goes because of my eyeshadow. Mm, yeah, we might have to do it. Out of all the ones I have, either the Tom Ford or this one. So I'm gonna put those two to the side, but if you go with any of those formulas, if you wanna splurge on yourself, any of these you will be happy with. For glosses, I only have three options only. First, Fenty Gloss Bomb. Y'all already know, everybody loves these. I have several shades of these. Keep these in my purse. Very, very hydrating, high shine, gorgeous colors, smell good. Anything you wanna ask about it that's good, the answer is yes. Y'all know I have been loving my Lawless Forget the Filler Lip plumping line smoothing lip gloss. This is my favorite to put on before I do my makeup. I also wear this on top of very drying liquid lipsticks or I will just line my lips and put this on. And then, I mean, yeah, Pat McGrath, her lip formula, anything that you purchase is amazing. This one is in the shade Bronze Venus. Super gorgeous pink has like some gold sparkles in it, just so pretty. I gotta figure out what I'm doing so we can end this video. We're gonna start off, let's go with the Sephora liner. Yeah, this is a lot darker than the tube color, so that kind of threw me off. This liner goes with what I have on the outside of my eye look, like this shade here. So maybe we can mix and do warm and cool together. Let's go Pat. Go big or go home. Freaking love this formula. I should have went with, <laughs> with a more brown lip. So I'm just gonna outline with that just to make it match with the lip look. Not because I don't like this color combo, but just to make everything go together a little more. So I'm gonna go in with Simone and just darken that up a little bit. She 
She is looking red. Let me get, I'm gonna get a lighter color, only just because I wanna lighten this up a little bit to match with the inner part of my eyeshadow. So same products, but just let me get a lighter color. Okay, I can't find the lip color that I'm looking for. I had the Too Faced Melted Matte in Shy Girl, I think it was, something like Queen Bee. That was a more neutral, cool tone shade and I can't find it. So I'm gonna show you guys a little trick. If ever you want to lighten up a lipstick, all you have to do is go over it with concealer. So I'm gonna do that because I can't find what I'm looking for. So I'm just gonna take a little tiny bit of my, oh, that one might be too light. This is the Tarte Shape Tape. And voila, we have a lighter lip color. And I'm gonna go back around the edges with Simone. And then for gloss, I'm gonna go in, I don't feel like my lips are gonna get very dry. And I don't wanna gold, so I need to find, let me grab one of my other shades of my Fenty. I'm gonna go in with the shade Champ Stamp which I got in her glossy posse set from Christmas. I have never done my lips this light. This looks <laughs> a little different for me, but I kind of like it. I'm gonna blot a little bit of this off. All right, so we just took the long route to get to this lip because I picked out what I liked and didn't think about shades. I had no idea what I was gonna do with my eyes. So that is what happens when you just kind of wing things. But we're gonna go ahead and finish the eyes. So I'm just going to do my little normal spiel and I'm going to smoke out the bottom lash line. I'm gonna use a little bit of the green. Look how dark that is. I could have used the black, but I didn't wanna go that dark. And then I'm gonna go back around it with Feral And then inner corner, let's go ahead and use a little shimmer. We're gonna use Hustle, which is that kind of champagne shade that I showed you guys. Ooh, that is pretty. All right, for eyeliner, honestly, my favorites are drugstore. I love my Physician's Formula. I love my Milani tank liner and I just, I don't see the point of buying a high end <laughs> eyeliner. I do have some and they are nice so I can include them in this video. But as far as like, what am I going to run out and buy? It's probably going to be drugstore. But one that I really like is this Tartus Tarte double ended liner. This is the double take. This one's in black. It has a liquid on one end and then a pencil on the other. I like this because it is two in one option. I don't love that it is a felt tip instead of a brush tip because those are my favorites. There just aren't, I haven't tried a lot. I have this Marc Jacobs one. This one's also really nice. This is also a felt tip. So the reality of it is guys, I use my drugstore ones. Even this one, the Stila Stay All Day, also a felt tip. These are the ones, if I had to pick a high end one, these are the ones that I would go to. This is the Stila Stay All Day in black. This is the Marc Jacobs Magic Marker Precision Pen in blacker. For pencil liners, I will say, these Smashbox Always Sharp liners, love them. I don't even really use a black liner. This one is in Violetta. It's a purple, but it is very dark. And then I also have 3D Sparks, which is a green, also very dark. I'm gonna use Violetta on my bottom lash line. It does not look like a purple, but it is. And I love that these have a built-in sharpener. Just add a little tiny bit more color and it'll help kind of symmetry with this lid shade that is looking a little purple. 
And then for my liquid liner, I'm going to go ahead. Which one do I want to use? Let's use the Marc Jacobs. I mean, it's a great liner and it's super black. It's just, I don't love felt tips. This is actually one of the better felt tip ones that I've tried. Mainly because it comes out like it's not skipping. Went over my shadow really well. It's a beautiful option and it's waterproof. It's just, again, that's my preference. I'm going to go ahead and use the Tarte one on the other side just so you guys can see how they compare. The pin, the felt tip pin on the Marc Jacob one is a little bit thinner and it's also a little more flexible. This feels very stiff. Which isn't necessarily a bad thing if you have trouble with a brush because you feel like it's too flimsy, you might like this. We're gonna talk about mascaras. You're probably not gonna be able to see it well with my shadow, but one of my favorites, Fenty Full Frontal. I've talked about this, I don't know how many times. I think it was my favorite last year, still my favorite this year. And then the Pat McGrath Dark Scar. These are actually very similar. And I think that's why I love them so much. There is no question, I don't have anything else. These are my two favorite mascaras and I like, they both wear well on the top and bottom lashes. The brushes aren't that small, so you do have to be careful, but I don't care about that. I think these are great. The Fenty one actually isn't that bad because, let me see if you guys can see this, like this part of it is kind of flatter than this side. So it's like one's wide, one's flat. I don't know if you guys can make that out right there, but yeah. So this works really well if you use the flatter side to get your bottom lashes. And then the Pat McGrath one. Oh, I kind of don't want to open this one and I shouldn't open the other one because I have smaller versions of these that I know I love. That's why I pull these out. Mm, I don't want to open a new one, but I don't feel like going to look for my small ones. So I'm just going to show you the brush on this one. Look at this packaging. See, the brush isn't too big on this one either. So you could get away with using it on your bottom lashes. I know you can't really tell by the bottom lashes. I'm gonna do the top lashes too, but I need to let this dry before I mess my face up. These are both drier formulas, which is something that I love. I don't like a mascara to be too wet. Like look at my lashes already. The fact that I can even see my lashes over my liner. Oh, thank you, Grande Lash. Like they both just give so much volume and they're so dark. I don't know if my lashes are just longer on this side or it's the mascara, but Pat McGrath does not play. Those are the mascaras. I'm gonna put on lashes because I feel like I have to and I wanna tell you guys which ones I love real quick. It is what it is. I have not tried any other high-end lashes other than my Nakia Joy Cosmetics. I have Lily lashes in my drawer. I have a pair of Pure, I have MAC. I have Moxie, I think, do I have Glamnetic? I'm not sure, I don't think I have Glamnetic, but I've been looking at them. But either way, I haven't tried them, so I can't include them in this video, even if I wanna try something different because they're not a favorite. So, and it should go to show if I have three boxes, this should be in my favorites. So I have her sets, and this one is the Naked set. So these are a little more wispy. They do get a little more dramatic at the bottom, but I've worn this pair. No, I think that's the only ones I've worn in this one. It's this pair here. I had just got these, so I have not worn any of these yet. This is the wispy set. All very wispy, more natural, even though this one's a little full. And then this last one is the glamour set. I've worn these, oh, and the top ones. Yeah, so I've worn two of these. I'm gonna use, I've worn these already, but I feel like they're gonna look the best with this look. So I'm gonna use this set right here. So I'm gonna put those on, come back and give you guys my final thoughts. I know this video is long, y'all probably ready to go anyway. So let me hurry up and get this done. 
All right, we have to get this hair together. Y'all, this wig is super cute. I am not even mad about it. Okay, <laughs> finishing up with the hair. Lashes are on. These lashes, I feel like I love them. They were easy to put on. I don't know if this is not, it's glued on. It's just the way these are made. Like I feel like this one is coming in too far and it looks a little weird, but that's how the lashes are made. So they're on, I'm good. Final steps, setting sprays. I have three, four. First one, Charlotte Tilbury. This is her Airbrush Flawless Setting Spray hairspray, cement for your face. If you want your makeup to last, you have to use this. Second strongest I feel like I found this year is the One Size On Till Dawn by Patrick Starr. This is mattifying. I am not gonna use that right now because my face is very matte, but this will also keep your makeup in place all day. And then last but not least, well not last last, but last as far as setting sprays, my Urban Decay All Nighter. This will never go anywhere. This will never leave my makeup collection. I love this because it not only sets it and makes it last, but it also helps to keep your makeup from settling into your fine lines. So this is one of my all time favorites. And then this is more, this is the MAC Fix Plus. This one is in the Fix Plus and Awaken. So this one is kind of like a, aromatherapy one sometimes I'll use this one before I start my makeup if I feel a little dry or just want a little pick me up I love this I don't use this for my eyeshadows because I feel like it's too nice I use other setting sprays that I don't really like for that but max fix mac fix plus is a cult favorite and I absolutely love it for when my skin is feeling dry I'm going in with my urban decay because my face already feels really matte And then I always like to go in after and just tap everything in. And that is it for this look. I know the video was long. I'm kind of sorry, but not sorry because I had a lot of options and I couldn't make up my mind. They're all my favorites, so it made it hard. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please comment below. Let me know if any of these are any of your favorites. Leave a comment. Let me know you stayed till the end. I love hearing from you guys. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and I will see you in my next one. Bye.